In this Microsoft Word video, I'm going to teach you the Microsoft Word insert, tab, and ribbon in depth. Let's get started. So in a previous video, I focused on the Microsoft Word home tab and ribbon, and this video is the next video in the series. Watch for future videos on the other tabs and ribbons. So as you can see, I'm working in a document. This is an article about new wave and synth pop music. And let's say I would like to insert some things into this document to enhance it and improve it. The insert tab is gonna be my best friend in that effort. Notice on the insert ribbon, the first group that we have is called pages. So this is where I could go to insert some pages. How about a cover page? So I'm gonna click there and Word gives me some options to choose from. Some of them have a lot of color associated with them. This one's almost completely black. Others have mostly white, but have some designs or some placeholders for images and text. And I just need to decide which of these I'd like to use. Notice that I also have a button here to get more cover pages from office.com. So there are even more than these nine or 12 or 13 that I have here to choose from. I'm gonna go with this one here, filigree. So I select it, and now I have a new first page in my document. This is my cover page. And I can simply click to enter a title. If I want to, I can change the font size to make it fit a little bit better. But I love how professional that looks. Microsoft has already gone to the trouble of making sure that the text font and the colors and the design all looks nice and professional. And I just need to customize the title, perhaps the subtitle, and the date, etc., to match the document that I'm working on. Okay, I'm gonna jump back to the insert tab, go back to the cover page option, and notice that I could remove the current cover page and select a different one if I want to. I'm happy with the one that I picked, so I'll just click away. And let's move on now to the second option in the pages group, it's blank page. Every once in a while, you may just need a blank page in your document. Maybe you plan to later put something else there, maybe a disclaimer, maybe a specific photo, and you don't have the photo right now, but you still want a placeholder for it. You can just go to the insert tab, the pages group, and click blank page. And wherever my cursor was, from there down to the bottom of that current page that's become blank and the following page is completely blank and what used to be immediately below my mouse cursor is now on the next page after that. So insert blank page is a very handy tool to just provide yourself some space for you to use later. Maybe later I come back and click and type content onto that blank page or like I said before maybe I insert a photo or another image there. Okay, there's another option that we have that in some ways is similar to blank page. Let's say that I would like my paper, at least on this page, to stop here. And then we can resume the rest of this on the next page. All I would have to do is click, let's say right here, and choose page break. And wherever my mouse was, there is a break now in the page and it's resumed at the next page. So again, it's kind of similar. One of the main differences is blank page gives me one complete blank page plus whatever space was left over at the bottom of the page I had selected. Page break doesn't give me one full blank page. It just kind of puts a stop to the text where I had the mouse cursor and then it resumes on the next page. So page break is great, I think, for putting in chapters. Let's say it's the end of a chapter. I can click page break, that chapter is over, and the next chapter begins on the next page. Okay, great. I'm gonna go back to my blank page because let's say I would like to produce a table here on the blank page listing some of the best new wave and synth pop bands. I can just click here on the insert tab in the tables group. I can just click on the tables button and there's a nice handy tool here that lets me draw out my table. I'm just putting my mouse on these different boxes. I'm not clicking or anything, but as I do, notice that I get a preview in the document itself to see what the table might look like. So I think I'm gonna do three columns and five rows. So that looks good to me. I'll just go ahead and click, and now I've inserted a table. Now this table can be customized. I can type in each of these cells of the table. I'll just tap tab to move over to the right. And of course, I could center those titles. 
I'll just go back to the home tab, use center to get those centered, and I could type in information directly into this table. Okay, now in addition to creating a table by using the handy table tool that I showed earlier, you can just click this button to insert a table. You can put in the number of columns, let's say five, the number of rows, how about three, the column widths, I want that to be automatic, but if you choose to, you can select specific column widths to use. I'm gonna stick with auto. And then you can auto fit to contents if you want or auto fit to window. I'm just gonna leave it as is, click okay. And now I've got my new table. There's also an option to draw a table. To show this, I need to get outside of the current table that I'm in, but I could go back up to table, draw a table, and I would just click and drag to draw the first part of the table, and then click and drag to draw another cell in the table and you can draw lines as well. It can be kind of hard to draw a table this way, but it's important to know that that option exists if you want to use it. Notice that it's possible to insert an Excel spreadsheet into Microsoft Word. So if you're used to working in Microsoft Excel, this may be an even better option for you. It's like you've got a little piece of Microsoft Excel right inside your Word document. I'm gonna undo that with Control Z, but I wanted you to see that that's possible. And there's also some quick tables. I can put in a calendar. I can put in a table with some formatting, subheadings, etc. And then I could change the text and the numbers. Finally, I do want you to know that it's possible to select text and then go up here to table and convert text to table. Now in this case, it's gonna be kind of hard to do, but I'll click OK. And now the highlighted paragraphs are put into table form. I don't love the result there, but it is possible to do that. Jumping back to insert, hopefully you can see how useful and important this table button is in Microsoft Word. Next, let's move on to the illustrations group. Here, we can easily insert images by clicking on pictures. I can insert pictures that are on this current device I'm working on. So if I click this device, it shows my computer and I can select an image to insert into my document. In this case, I don't have the images I need on my actual device. So I'm gonna go to pictures again. This time I'll choose stock images or online pictures. Now stock images, I believe is reserved for Microsoft Word users that have a Microsoft 365 subscription. You could try it out if you don't have one and see if it works. But online pictures, I believe is available for anyone using modern versions of Microsoft Word. So I'll do a search for synthesizer keyboard, maybe this one here. I'll select it and insert it into my document. If I select the image, I can try to remove the background if I want to. This option is part of the new picture format tab. This only appeared because I inserted an image and then selected the image. But with that selected, I can click remove background. It didn't work completely, but I could mark areas to keep by clicking and dragging. I wanna keep that, I wanna keep that, and I wanna keep that. I also wanna keep the keys. So that looks quite a bit better. So now I'll click keep changes. There's my keyboard. The image is a little too big for me. So I'll select the image and go to the corner and I'll click and drag on this handle. I'm gonna hold the shift key as I drag. By holding shift, it will keep the aspect ratio of the image intact so the image doesn't get distorted. So there's my image that I've inserted by going to the insert tab, illustrations group, I clicked on pictures and chose online pictures. Now you may already know this, but if not, it's important that when you insert images that you think about how they will interact with the rest of your document. So for example, if I click on this symbol here, I can change how this image interacts with the text. I can make the text appear around the image like this or even tighter around the image. I could have the image appear behind the text or in front of the text. In most cases, I choose in front of the text. Once I choose that, I have full freedom to click and drag and move the image exactly where I want it to be, and I can place it perfectly where I want it. So that's the insert online pictures option. We also have stock images, at least if you have a Microsoft 365 subscription. So I'll search for keyboard, 
and choose one of the results, click insert. And so this is very similar to the other option I showed. The main difference is the source of the image. Okay, going back to insert, in addition to inserting pictures, we can insert shapes. If you click there on the shapes button, you can choose a recently used shape. You can select lines, rectangles, basic shapes, block arrows, and much more. I'm gonna select a line. Notice that there are arrows. And once you insert the line or arrow or other shape into your document, you do get the shape format tab with all sorts of options that appear. For example, I could change the shape effects, the shape outline, including the weight of the shape, make it thicker, and there are many other options to explore in the shape format tab. Going back to the insert tab, other shapes that are important to be aware of are these block arrows, there are some equation shapes that are very useful for math teachers, flowcharts can be very useful as well, callouts, and many others. So check out those shapes. Next, we have icons. If you click on icons, you can do a search for black and white or gray icons. So I'll do a search for music, and there are a couple that I'm interested in. I think I'll choose this one here, or actually this one of this headset. I'll click insert, and that's added to my document. Once again, I should select how that icon interacts with my text. In my case, I want it to be in front of my text. Let's jump back to the insert tab. In addition to pictures, shapes, and icons, we also have 3D models. Once again, I could select models that are on this device that I'm working on, or I could go to my stock 3D models library. This isn't in every version of Microsoft Word. I'll do a search for drums. There's a drum kit. I'll select it and click insert. And now I have a 3D image of a drum kit. And notice that if you click and drag on this symbol, you can rotate the drum kit to be exactly the way you want it to be on the page. I'm gonna move it over here here and shrink it down a bit and I'm happy with that. Back to insert, we also have smart art and if you're interested in learning more about smart art, please watch my other videos on that topic. But for now, let me just point out one example of smart art and that is a cycle. So I can select this for example and choose okay and it puts this cycle layout on the screen and I could type in text on each of these circles. Step one is form a band. Step two, write music. But as you type, you can create this smart art cycle chart in this case. There's lots of options associated with those charts. They appear when you insert a smart art and then click on it. You'll get this smart art design tab and ribbon. Once again, I'm gonna shrink that down and let's go back to the insert tab. So as you can see, there's so much here on the insert ribbon that can really enhance our Word documents. In addition to SmartArt, we have charts. You can select a chart type and then click OK. The chart is placed on the document and you get a pop-up in this case that once again is a little glimpse of Microsoft Excel. So even though I'm in Microsoft Word, I'm using Microsoft Excel. So here where it says sales, I'm gonna change that to subgenres. Let's say subgenres of new wave music. And instead of first quarter, I'm gonna call this new wave rock, synth pop, and a couple others. And then I can put in the numbers associated with those different subgenres or whatever it may be that you're charting. When you're done, you can just click away from your chart and you could even X out of the Microsoft Excel window. As with all of these visual elements, I can click on it and use the corner to drag and shrink that chart down to the size I want it to be. And then I can use this symbol here to change it to be in front of the text or behind the text, whatever I want to do. And I can move it where I want it to be on my page. Okay, we're moving right along in the illustrations group. The final tool that we have there is the screenshot tool. This tool enables me to quickly add a snapshot of any window that's open on my desktop. So I'll click screenshot. It shows me a preview of each of those windows. This is the one I want. So I'll click on it and I get a snapshot of that window. Now notice as I click and drag to make this bigger, it's warping it. So once again, I should hold the shift key on my keyboard and now it won't let me warp the image. It keeps it in proportion. 
Again, I can select the image and decide how to wrap the text. That handy button that usually appears here is gone, but if I go up to the Picture Format tab and select Wrap Text, I may be able to change how this image interacts with the text on the document. Oh, there it is again. It's back. So I'll click there and put it in front of the text, and now it should be draggable where I want it to be. Okay, so we've looked at all of the illustrations group. Let's move over to the Reuse Files group. If you click there, it will open up a panel at the right where you'll be able to see other Word documents that you've worked on in the past. I'm gonna browse down to this document here. I'll select it, here's the document, and I can either open this document or insert a link from my current document to this document that's listed here. I'm gonna do that. I'll click on Insert Link, there it is in my document. I'm done with this panel now, so I'll X out of it. And now that panel's gone. Let's look now at the media group. There's just one button there, online videos. If I click there, Microsoft Word gives me the ability to enter the address for an online video that I would like to insert into my Word document. You can see there's some fine print here, but all I need to do is provide an address, and if it's correct, I'll see a preview. Notice the list of different video providers that are accepted in Microsoft Word. So this is a pretty good list. I'm gonna to go to YouTube and search out a really wonderful YouTube channel that I happen to know about. And I'll select this specific YouTube video. I'll click Share, I'll copy the link, and then I can close out of YouTube. And I'm gonna paste that link right into this box. Here I see the preview, and I'll click Insert. And now, inside my Word document is a YouTube video that will be playable for the reader of the document. Click Play and it begins. Now, of course, it's only useful to include online videos in your Word document if it's gonna be accessed online or in digital format. Obviously, it's not gonna print out with the video. If you do print out the page, it will just print a thumbnail of the video. Okay, let's jump back to the Insert tab and Ribbon. Next, we have Links. In the Links group, we have three different options. We can insert a link. If you click here on the drop-down next to link, you'll see a list of recent documents. So if I select this one, for example, a link appears in my document to that specific document. I'm gonna undo that. If I click that drop-down arrow again, there's also an option to search for files on your computer. And there's also the option of just inserting a link to a place in this current document I'm working in, or to an email address, or to an existing file or web page. So for example, I want to provide this link so that you can subscribe to this fantastic YouTube channel. So I'll just copy that URL, paste it in as the address, click OK. And now anyone that holds control and clicks on this link will be directly taken to the SynthPop Reviews YouTube channel so they can subscribe. So we've looked at inserting a link, but what about a bookmark? So the way this works is you can bookmark key points of your document, and this is what I would like to bookmark. So I'm going to click and drag to highlight it, and I'll go to the bookmark button, and I'll call this Evolution of New Wave. Notice that it's all one word. I could sort the bookmarks by name or by location. I think location makes more sense in this case. I'll click Add. So now I've set up a bookmark, and at the top of the document, let's say, I could create a link or a reference to that paragraph on Evolution of New Wave. So I'm typing out a sentence, and now that I've typed it out, I'll click and drag where it says click here, I'll go up to link, and now I can choose place in this document, and there it is, Evolution of New Wave. It's a bookmark, and I can click OK and I have now created a bookmark and I've linked to that bookmark. A similar tool is cross-reference. And I would like to create a cross-reference here after New Wave. So I click there and my cursor moves there and I'll click on cross-reference and then I'm gonna cross-reference this with Simple Minds. So I select Simple Minds, click Insert, click Close. And so now there is a cross-reference to item number two. That's why the numeral two appeared after my text. Okay, next up we have the comments group. I can click here on the comment button to simply make a comment. I can click this button to post that comment. And now any viewer of this document will see that there's a comment and they'll see it here at the right. I'm gonna click delete thread. 
So comments are pretty straightforward. They're basically information that you want to send to other people that collaborate with you on a document, or they could be comments for yourself. But let's move on now to the header and footer group. If I click on header, it's just what you would expect. You can change the very top of each page in your document. I could choose this option, a blank header but with some text or a blank header with three columns worth of text. Here's one that's not blank. It's got a little outline around it. Here's another that's not blank. It's got this blue bar or band. You can also get even more headers by browsing down. You can get even more from office.com. You can edit a header, remove a header, or save a selection to the header gallery. So let's say I really like this Wisp header. I select it, it puts it in, it automatically has a spot here for the author's name and the date. And if I really like that header, I can go back in to the header tool and I could select it and edit it. And I could do that here in the header and footer tab and ribbon. I'm gonna close header and footer so that I can go back to working on my document, but the header is still there. I'm gonna click back on the insert tab and let's look briefly at footer. It works very much the same way but now it's the bottom part of the page, not the top part. Next up, we have one of those tools that I use all the time whenever I'm creating a long document, maybe a speech or a talk I have to give, maybe it's a novel I'm working on or a short story. The page number tool is very useful. I like to know what page I'm on. Where do I want that page number to appear? At the top of the page, then click here. You can see there's lots of options and you can get more options from office.com. You can also do the bottom of the page. This is what I do most often. I'll choose the bottom center or the bottom right. This is a good option where it actually spells out page. So page one, page two, etc. Going back to insert page number, notice that you can format the page numbers, and this is helpful. For example, some people don't want page number one to say page one. They want to start with page two because it's obvious you're on page one. Personally, I like it to start on page one, so I'm going to leave it that way, but this is where you could make that change, and then just click OK. Okay, so we've finished the header and footer group. Let's move on to the text group. But before we do, I'm going to go back to the header and footer tab and click close header and footer to get back into the regular view of my document. Okay, back on insert into the text group. The first option we have there is the text box option. Once again, I get a gallery of built-in text boxes that I could use. Some of these are more vertical, some are more horizontal, some have colors associated with them or other design elements. You can also get more from office.com or you can just draw out a text box. Let's look at this option here and the draw text box option. So I'll just click here on banded quote and I get a nice text box that appears in my document and then I can just click on the text and type out the quote and then if I want to I can move that text box with the quote to where I want it to be. Let's jump back to insert and text box. In most cases, when I use insert text box, I'm going here to draw my own text box. But there are some great pre-made text boxes that are worth using as well. Here, I'm just gonna click and drag on my document and draw out the size and shape of the text box. And then I can type, maybe something like that. I can even resize it afterwards. And then I can click and drag to put that text box wherever I want it to be. I use text boxes quite a bit. And so this button is very useful to me. Next, I'm gonna go to quick parts. If I click on quick parts, it gives me some quick access to little pieces of information or little tools that I can add into my document. For example, there's some auto text where I can automatically put my name into a document. If I go down to document property, I can quickly add in things like the author. I could click somewhere else, go back to insert quick parts, document property, and I'm gonna add in the publish date. And so these quick parts are just handy little pieces of information that you can quickly drop into your document. I'll put title, and there's so many more. So definitely check out quick parts. If I click outside of the text box I'm currently in, it will give me the option of inserting some word art. So I'll just click there and you can see the different styles of word art that appear for me. I'm gonna select this one here and I'll type out OMD and I've added this word art into my Word document. Going back to the insert tab and ribbon, I'm gonna click outside of that word art I created because I want to show you what is meant by this next tool, drop cap. 
Let's say that this paragraph in my document is the beginning of a new chapter. I may want the word simultaneously to have a drop cap at the beginning. What is a drop cap? It's a really big first letter in the first word. And this is something that is traditional in a lot of books, especially older books. So let's try it out. Notice that my cursor is just right in front of the first word in this paragraph. And I'm going to go up here and click drop cap. I can choose to leave it as none, but the whole point of clicking here is to add a drop cap. So I'm going to make it dropped. And look what happens. The letter S in simultaneously becomes huge and it drops it down so that it covers really three lines of text. But the text that would have been hidden is dropped down and moved to the right. So this is a fancy way to begin a new chapter or a new book in your document. I'm going to click back on drop text and I could change it to in margin. You can see the difference. This way the text is all just in one block except for the drop cap and that's over to the left in the margin. There are some other drop cap options that you can choose from and you can explore those if you're interested. For example, you could change the number of lines to drop. Instead of three, it could just be two or four or ten, whatever you're interested in. I'm going to go back to two and you can see the result. Okay, I'm really ruining this document with all of these things I'm inserting. But I hope that you can see that if you do this right and thoughtfully, the things that you insert using the insert ribbon can really be powerful and enhance your message and your document overall. Next up, we have signature line. So I'm going to insert a signature line into my document. Let's say I need someone to sign off on this document that I'm making. I could go to the place in the document where I want the signature line. Just click on signature line. The suggest signer that's going to sign off on this document. I could put that name here, put in a title, and perhaps the email address for the signer, and then there's some instructions. If I want to, I can allow the signer to add comments, and we could show the sign date if we want to also. I'll click OK, and now there's a nice signature line ready for Vince Clark's signature. Next up, if I want to, I could click here to insert the date and time. If I choose to do that, there are different formats to choose from, different layouts for the date and time. I'm going to skip that for now. Let's move on to object. If I select object, it's going to give me the option to insert any of these different types of objects into my Word document. A Microsoft graph chart, an Excel worksheet, a Word document, a package, a paintbrush picture, WordPad document. There's all of these different document types or object types that I can insert into my Word document. If you're interested in learning more about that, I have other videos that show you how to do this, but it's pretty straightforward. You would basically just select the type of object that you would like to insert, click OK, and then produce the document, save it, and then you can X out of it, and that is added to your document. Okay, let's move on to our last group on the insert ribbon. It's the symbols group. And this is particularly helpful and useful for math teachers or others that need to insert equations or special symbols. So I'm going to click on equation and I clicked on the top part of that button. Now I just need to type the equation here. So x equals y squared plus 78, and I don't really know what I'm doing here, but there is my equation. Now I get a drop down arrow and I can save this as a new equation. I can make it professional or linear, etc. So I have some nice options there. Now, even though I'm not a mathematician, I can see how this could be very useful if I were or if I were a math teacher. In addition to clicking that top part of the equation button and just typing in your equation, you can click the bottom part of the button and you could choose a built in equation. So the area of a circle, binomial theorem, of course, you got to have that one, and trig identity 2, what would we do without that? If you want that one, you just click on it and it appears right in your document. And as with any equation that you add into your Word document, you get a special equation tab and ribbon that you can use to adjust or change your equation. I'm going to go back to insert because I want you to see that this symbols group is not just for math even though that may be primarily what it's used for. You can also go here to symbol and choose symbols that are in some cases math related symbols, but in other cases they're just symbols that you may want in your document. If you click on symbol and then choose more symbols, you get a huge list of symbols to choose from, including wingdings, 
WebDings, and many others. You can see here some of my recently used symbols. This copyright symbol could be very helpful. I'll click on it and click insert, and now it's part of my document. So at this point, we've looked at the entire Microsoft Word insert tab and ribbon with each of its groups and the tools that are on that part of the ribbon. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned a lot about Microsoft Word and all of the amazing things that you can insert into your documents. Please search out my other videos in this series because as you learn each Microsoft Word tab and the corresponding ribbon that goes with it, you will master Microsoft Word like never before. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, the best way to do that is to become a channel member. And you can do that by clicking the join button below the video or also on the channel homepage. You'll get access to special perks, including to a behind the scenes members only podcast that I update at least once a month. You could also support me by clicking the thanks button below the video, by supporting me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch. And you'll see information about those options in the description below the video. 